The next step that we're going to do is to add entities to a diagram. We're going to begin creating a diagram. So we've gone over this scenario, right, that talks about student U and tried to pull out the nouns and identify whether they were objects that have properties and that way they would be an entity or whether they were a single value and would be an attribute. And we had these ones left highlighted. Notice we made a note about the grades, <clears throat> about a grade, but as we read down here further about a grade, we see that it's a single value and it lists here the possible values that it can have. So since it's a single value, this will become an attribute. So I'm just gonna add that to the note. Registers is not a noun, uh, that's a verb, so it's something that they do. So this will be, come more likely be an attribute as well. I'm sorry, not an attribute, um, it's a verb, so this will be a relationship. It's something that, they, that, that relates objects together, so, or entities together. So we ended up with this, these highlighted nouns that, have, that are more complex, that have multiple values uh, or properties, and these we're going to create then as entities in our database diagram. To create the tools, I'm, or to create the diagrams, I'm going to use a tool called draw.io, and this is an online tool that's freely available. There are other uh, diagram drawing tools that are available that you can choose to use if you prefer. They're all kind of have their own individual pros and cons, and this is the one that I'll be using this semester. And what I want to do here after I type in draw.io in the address bar is I want to create a new diagram. And I prefer, there are some templates. I usually find that I erase more than, there, than, than I keep. So I find that it's best to just start with a blank diagram. It will ask you to pick a folder. And this will just be stored on your Google Drive, so I'll click select a folder there on my Google Drive. And this is what a blank diagram looks like. And what we want to do first is add entities. Now if we check our key to our database, we see that entities are rectangles. And that's what we want to add. And we can get those from the general shapes that are available. You can also add more shapes and find uh, values down in the entity relation uh, entity relationship section. Now, if you're not seeing an entity relationship section, you can add more shapes by clicking on that bottom more shapes and check the box by entity relation. Now, they don't have in this tool for an entity they use a square, so you can add that and just elongate it to make it a rectangle. And uh, but I prefer just to use the rectangle that's available in the general section. So this is how I add an entity, and then I click on it, double click on it, and it gives you a, a flashing light, and that gives you for a text box. So here I can type, the, I can label it. And the first one that we have is a user. So I'm gonna say, okay, the entity is the user. The next entities that we have are system administrators, instructors, and students. Now these are all types of users. And as we're developing this database, the way that database designers handle this is a relationship, right? That system administrator is a user, instructor is a user, is they just identify a property that recognizes, that specifies which type of user that they are. But they're all the same kind of entity. And so we only create one entity for this. Now this is different than how software engineer analysts do it. And so you may have done it different in a system, in a software engineering course, where they're very specific about that is relationship, means an inheritance relationship, and you'll have different classes and connect them in different ways for that. But for a database design, these all become a single entity, and then we just identify a property or an attribute that will specify which specific type they are. All right, though so we need one for user, we also need one for section. So we'll just drag a rectangle on, double click on it, and type section for the label. We'll need a phone number entity 
So we drag that on and specify and label it phone number. Spelling helps. A course. Oh, I missed one. A section. Oh, no, I've got it. Sections right there. Phone number. A course. Double click and type it on there. And a prerequisite course. Well, let's talk about this for a minute. So what is a prerequisite course? So it really helps when you're doing this to be able to think about examples in the real world. So for example, 1400 is a prerequisite to 1410. But it turns out that 1400 and 1410 are both courses. And so they're the exact same, right? They're both courses. They have all these things that a course has, uh, right? A department code, a title, a description, a number of credits. Both 1400 and 1410 will have all the things that a course has. But there's this specific relationship between them that one is a prerequisite to another. So it's going to turn out that a prerequisite course is no different than a regular course. It has exactly the same properties and that the prerequisite course will be a relationship between two courses. So let's add that to our notes to keep track of. That prerequisite is a relationship rather than a separate entity. So it's not a different kind of course. It's a course with all the same properties, but it is a relationship between two courses. So for entities, there's no additional entity needed for prerequisite courses. So there we have added to our diagram all the different entities that we were expecting. And there we have them. Four entities on our diagram.